guys, Nary here from Drake Wing Gamers. If you know me on Twitter, The Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Changeling Tale, Marion's Path. So guys, let's go ahead and jump right back into the big reveal of what Marion's going to be wearing to the Heifer Parade. I am very interested to see how this goes with the audience. Oh my, is Malcolm going to have to bust some heads protecting his gal? Well, let's just find out, shall we? Anyway guys, sit back and enjoy for the next 18 minutes while entertaining you. Let's jump right in. Alarm Chan, you're up, and let's go. Mm -hmm. Alright. I appreciate Grind's team spirit, but right now, who wins is the least of my concerns. My heart swells because behind Gemma, taking up the very rear of the procession. Our time. There she is! There's Marion! Uh, Marion, where? Um, oh my. Are we gonna get it? We're we gonna get it? We're we gonna get it? Ah! We got it! Good lord, she's got a huge chest. My god, girl. She's got them massive udders. Our Marion comes into view, leading Fiona and friends to the town square. I've never seen Marion so happy. Or have you ever seen her so beautiful? The colorful gown and delicate floral crown have her looking magical as a forest nymph. Gran, Jesse, you two outdid yourselves. Of course we did. It's for Marion. It seems others approve, too. As Marion and her entourage come closer, I hear exa exclamations from a few townsfolk who recognize her. Oh, Marion! Where have you been? Oh, it's such a treat to see you! Oh, how darling! How darling! I've never seen you look so marvelous! You look like a real heifer! The gaggle of women appear too distracted to dwell on the mystery of Marion's absence, and, take it as a, and I take it as a good sign. Marion waves to her audience with glee. Several more voices cheer and holler in her favor. A few whispers question how she was able to fashion such a realistic cow costume. A voice shouts, Hey, when is walking upright? The crowd erupts in laughter and I wince, waiting to see if it bothers Marion. Instead, she boldly spins in a circle. I think the hems of her dress fly high enough to show her knees, and she kicks up her heels. If no one wonders when Marion became a cow, they may at least wonder how she when she, when she gained so much self-confidence. Those who are watching give her a round of applause. The spectacle of this year's parade far outshines that of years past, and the audience is eating it up. There's the, uh, baby bump. Nope. <laughs> Malcolm, you've been a little doing a little breeding. Out of the corner of my eye, a flash of color catches my attention. It's Effie, barely visible through the crowd. She looks back, holding my gaze to the sea of people. Effie, who right here at the beginning of the things gave me the tiny cowbell that still hangs around Marion's neck. Effie, who shared with me the furry secret these the furry secret these two women have in common. The secret Marion is currently revealing to the town right now. I'd wondered if I would ever see this mysterious girl again. Part of me still feels guilty about treating her the way I did after she opened up. But in a way, I'm not surprised to see Effie here. As this confusing, unusual, magical chapter of our, in our lives comes to a close, as another chapter begins. Hmm. She tips her hat to me and walks off behind the stag and nanny. If he is gone. I want to chase after her, to ask a hundred questions, or at least to apologize, to set things right between us. But a hand lightly touches my shoulder. Malcolm, l look! Oh, whoa. Marion is waving to us, positively bursting with delight. She spotted us in the audience and is leading her company of cows our way. I join her sisters and Gran in waving back. My heart nearly leaps out of my chest. I'm so happy for Marion. Way to go, sis. I knew you could do it. I'm so proud of you. Show that Gemma how a real heifer queen struts. I'm swept up in the excitement. Marion's day is coming so well, is going so well, I let myself believe that maybe, maybe we're all worried over nothing. And an unwanted voice pipes up. Oi! That's the cow lady that tried to kill us! Hey, she's a real live heifer! A monster! Gran is next to me, craning her neck to see who made the declaration. It's Rubina's boys, Gran. Those devils! Curses to them! Where are they? I'll knock them out! A few people laugh at the lad's allegation. I'd have thought it absurd, too, if I didn't know better. Oh my. A small boy scurries out into the road and pulls Marion's tail to see for himself. She helps and he screams when he sees that it is indeed attached. That little miscreant! Marion and her cows come to a halt and the youth scampers off. I catch her eye and try to signal that we could leave, but no, she stands taller. Don't touch my tail! Everyone goes quiet, even the cows, and a murmur spreads to the crowd. Marion, is it true? A cow woman? How horrible! I can't believe it! Oh my god! Oh my god! I've been eating her cheese! 
Oh my god. A few people closest to Marion begin edging away, so I do the opposite. I step out into the square and stand beside my love. Malcolm! Good day, Marion. You're looking mighty lovely in that dress. That elicits some feminine giggles from the crowd. Marion has flushed red through her fur. You didn't think we'd let you hog the spotlight, did you? A cat collar shouts. Hey, Jesse, you'll always be my effort queen. In your dreams, you dunderhead. <laughs> Panting from the short jog to join us, Grant takes up a position along the flank. Murph, I'll hear for you, dearie. Another voice calls out, an old woman. Look who joined them. Is that pig-headed women? Is that the pig-headed women from the Dun from Dundee? Look, watch your tongue. The crowd continues to buzz when an unmistakable ruby ruby robed individual steps up onto the market across across to addresses them from the zeal. Worry not, fair townsfolk, about the strange witchcraft before us, for God's light protects us from all manner of devilry and mischief. A woman shrieks. A devil? Witchcraft? Marion is a witch? Are there cow witches? She's been cursed! Please, everyone, it's just me, Marion! Marion tries to speak, but her words are lost amid the fervor. Then one voice clears the commotion. Leave her be! Alona has pushed her way through the pack to us, and takes Marion's hoof in her hand. She's no more cursed than you or me! You're one to talk, witch! She's an actual cow? How? How a cow? <laughs> Don't deny that you have your hand in this, Alana. The grumblings grow in volume until Marion cries out. Ow! What happened? A stone! Someone over there threw a stone at me! I look down and see a block of cheese lying where it fell. Gouda. The sound of obnoxious laughter carries over the hubbub. I look back up to see Rabina's sons running down the street, with Rabina herself chasing them not far behind. Oh boy. Oh! The rascals are stopped in the tracks by an imposing figure standing alone at the outskirts of the town. Father! Decked out in his dress uniform, Owen looks all the more intimidating. He squints at the two miscreants harshly. Uh, hello, Mr. McLeod. Uh, welcome back, Mr. McLeod. Get out of my sight. The boys, th the boys stay frozen in place until their mother catches up to them. She apologizes to Owen profusely before pulling, before pulling each, each away by the air. His path now clear, Owen marches towards us. Marion's sisters and I instinctively tighten our ranks. With every step he takes, the townsfolk closest to him hushes. Enough know who Owen is, and that he is not a man to trifle with. A few utter hellos as he walks past. He acknowledges none of them. Welcome home, Owen. Good Good to have you back, sir. Go easy on the last, will you? His final, his final bootfall hits the road with a crunch as he scrutinizes our motley little group. I look back and forth between Owen and his eldest daughter, wondering what they will say, as apparently does everyone else. The whole crowd has gone still. I don't know who you are. Oh. I don't know who you are anymore, Marion. Elena pipes up before anyone else can reply. How can you say that? That's your daughter! They give each other a peculiar look that says more than I understand. You don't understand, father. You never could. Marion, you misunderstand me. I'm proud of your tenacity. I'm so used to seeing you quiet, soft-spoken, determined, yes, but never speaking up for yourself. Clearly you found your voice, even if it's... it's... Even if it's a moo? Marion and Owen share a surprised laugh over the absurdity of it all, even as both become misty-eyed. You'll always be my little girl, but I've never thought you would turn into such a fighter. It's a strong force. I should have known better, though. You're just like your mother. Oh. I can actually see Marion melt into a million tears of happiness. Oh. Owen takes his daughter's cloven hand and presses it to his heart. You live here, Marion, in my heart. Forever. The townspeople can maintain their quiet no longer. Their whispers, shout accusations, and cheers restore life to the town square. Marion beams with pride. The rest of us exchange knowing looks and step back, giving Marion and her father some much-deserved space. Oh, The moment is interrupted when our, into our, 
went into our little into our circle scuttles little flory still dressed as a cow fiona welcomes the strange newcomer with a curious moo with mary myth marion myth marion <laughs> yes what is it flory you don't have to hide your tail now we can be calf together calf oh cows oh flory hugs marion who tears up and squeezes flory tight I think you're right, Flory. I think you're right. More like bat ears. <laughs> the little girl scuttles off and over to the judge's table, where she talks at one of the women's hymns. The judge bends down to listen to Flory and breaks into a smile. I recognize the face but can't place her name. Flory darts off and the woman leans over to conspire with the other judges. Gran, who is that? Why, that's Flory... F Flora Farewell. Fairfell, the town baker, Flory's mother. Well, I'll be... May I have your attention, everyone? The Honorable Judges of the A-185th Annual Heifer Parade have reached our decision. The noise level drops as everyone turns toward the judges' table. Although the ruling may not be the day's biggest revelation, the institution remains respected. With only one vote dissenting, this year's title of Heifer Queen goes to someone who certainly got into the spirit of the festival. The winner is Marion McLeod. Yes! The audience burst into polite clapping. I don't know what I expected. Polite clapping. Maggie tight scowls. Gran explodes with excitement. Jesse and Grace whoop with joy, and I add my whoops to theirs. Well done, sis. You earned it. You're the cream of the crop, Marion. Our efforts begin to catch with the oh, to catch with the crowd, who finally offer their own words of encouragement. We're proud of you, Marion. Congratulations, dear. Please drop by for tea sometime. I have so many questions. Marion laughs. The proud new owner of a title at once both so superficial and incredibly meaningful. A title we all hope leads to acceptance. The only person prouder than Marion herself is her father. They look to Owen and make a signal every shoulder learned in training. He nods. Three. Two. One. M Moo! <laughs> With a great lift, we set Marion on our shoulders. The crowd applauds, and I like to think it's as much of our feat of strength as for Acta Craig's newest star. Hey, what are you doing? We're finishing the parade. Far down the road, I can just make out Jim and her jerseys, working their way down the route. And we'll have to march quickly if we're to catch up. Out of nowhere, Alana has produced her bagpipes. She begins a merry tune, enough to sweep away any lingering concerns of so-called curses and witchcraft. Seeing their queen atop our shoulders, Fiona and the other cows rally back around Jesse, Grace, Grant, and Grant to clo close in too. Everyone ready? Let's go! To the sound of Alana's bagpipes and Marion's laughter, we resume the procession. Marion might have started the parade route alone, but we all finish it finish it with her together as a family. <laughs> Aww, so cute! The after party, I presume. When we reached the end of the parade route, there was a smattering of people ready with questions for Marion. Some angry, some enthralled. Luckily, Bulgaris steps in with his balls. <laughs> Who wants some of Bulgaris' famous haggis balls? Nothing beats them, am I right, Alana? <laughs> I just kind of hear a gag. Like magic, most of the crowd disperses. Bulgaris for once looks pleased with himself instead of hurt. You gonna take one of those balls? And pull Bulgaris aside so the scent doesn't offend our own group. You seem at ease with all this. Hey, I'm no Dalton lad. I suspected something was up the moment I saw her down the years. I know things about the magic surrounding this village. He pats me. He pats my shoulder hard. And we'd all rather see Marion this way, not to not see her at all. I don't know, Grace, Grand, Jesse, Bogart, and Owen, the bake shop owner and her young daughter, we're all Marion's family as she is ours. I couldn't agree more. Come on, let's go get some real food. <laughs> Grace takes off for the luncheon to sample sweets and cordials, and several more from our band follow suit. Follows which. Real food? What's that supposed to mean? Malcolm, show these lasses what the real man eats. Reluctantly, I take the offered balls. Supposing Bulgaris earned that much. Every nibble makes me want to wretch. There you go, lad. That's how you put hair on your chest. As much as on Marion's, I wonder. I look over to see with that she and Gran have been... Cats, knock it off. She and Gran have been cornered by an old lady. The one who'd shouted about the pig-headed woman in Dundee. It sounded like this woman is genuinely interested in Marion's welfare, so I leave them be to chat. She looks happy, doesn't she? She does. 
We can't thank you enough for helping her make it this far. Left unsaid is how much we all appreciate Jessie coming back in Marion's time of need. With Jessie's work, work here done, I'm sure she'll return to Glasgow soon. It's because of you too, Malcolm. Thanks for being part of our lives. I mean it. You're a treasure. Marion is blessed to have you. Much obliged, Jessie. I'm honored to be part of this family. Hey, knock it off over there! Just make sure you make her an honest woman. She deserves that. I choke on Bulgare's balls. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, yes, yes, of course. I'll see to it, Jesse, I promise. That's a boy. Soon another woman is by my side. After everything, I still find it difficult to meet her gaze. I'm sorry, Malcolm. For what? Marion is good. This is a proud day for her. I'm sorry for ever telling you to stay away. I finally look into my old school teacher's eyes and I'm swept away. Inside them I see shame, regret, and eternal patience. I I don't know what to say. I know it I know you meant no harm. You and I both want to protect her, I know that now. As Alana holds my stare, I start to wonder if this day if they, this day went too smoothly because of her doing. Some kind of hold she possesses over others. But as quickly as the thought comes, it goes, vanishes. She unlocks her eyes from mine and turns to face the townsfolk. They dine and mingle over lunch as if nothing is out of the ordinary. Stay close, Malcolm. Never be afraid to reach out. Alana wanders off, just as Marion finishes her conversation. Malcolm, are you alright? Oh, I'll be, I'll be just fine. What about you? How are you handling all the attention? It's exhilarating, and maybe a wee bit overwhelming. All in all, I think it just hasn't sunk in yet. As long as you feel comfortable, I don't want to hold you back. Everyone has... Everyone has. Uh, everyone else has already found their way to the luncheon. What do you say? Shall we join them? Are you sure you're comfortable with that? Recall what happened the last time we had lunch there. We both laugh. I remember, but I think this time everything will turn out just fine. I do too. I do too. Do do do. -do. Oh, still got a little, some more to do. Okay. Oh wow. Oh wow. Oh wow. Looks like quite a while is passing. Hey little pretty boy, I see you on the table. I'm starting to worry I'll rub a hole in my pocket from the number of times I have my hand reaches inside to make sure the gift is still there. Malcolm, is there something wrong with your hip? Dandy, just feeling a little chill is all. It's not entirely untrue. The sunlight is warm, but the air has turned cold. Hinting at the frosty weather to come. I should have worn a heavier jacket. I'm going to pause it right here, guys, because I think or we're going to get to the big wedding scene after this. Asking for her hoof. Yes! Oh! Mm! Oh, I can't wait. Oh, yep, that's the next episode, guys. They're getting married. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Leave a super thanks or a tip if you can. It always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!